In this video we're going to be talking about how to solve for the range for a full range projectile struck at ground level. So we have a golf ball that struck 60 degrees from the horizontal. It has a starting velocity of 10 meters per second and we're wondering how far does it travel until it strikes the ground. So most importantly you want to put all your values into an x and y column and I will quickly explain why. It's because as something is moving through the air and it's in free fall motion that it's only influenced by the force of gravity. So the force of gravity is pulling straight down. So that's only for, um, excuse me, it's only, so it's only affecting the vertical component. As something is moving downward, it's making it speed up. If something is moving upwards, it's slowing down. Everything in this column is going to be under accelerated motion. On the other hand, in the x direction, horizontally, there are no forces pushing left or right. So therefore, it has no change in velocity and everything on this side is at a constant velocity. So if you put anything in this column, we're only going to use this formula over here. And if we put anything in this column, we're able to use any of our accelerated formulas right over here. All right, so let's go ahead and label some of our variables that can fit into one of these two columns. Um, as I see here, I see the 10 meters per second, and that is the 10 meters per second that the golf ball initially has. And here is that 60 degree angle. Now that 10 meters per second doesn't fit in the horizontal or vertical column. So we want to make sure we split it up into two components and we can call that the VX and the VY. So we're gonna go ahead and use a couple trig functions and solve for our VX and VY before we get started in labeling variables and plugging stuff in. All right, so I finished solving for the X and Y component of our 10 meters per second. And what I used is the sine function so that I could use the opposite divided by our hypotenuse. And then I used the cosine function so I could use our adjacent over our hypotenuse and then just cross multiply the 10 up and over in each of the cases. And then I got 8.66 meters per second for the Y component and five meters per second for the X component. When I drop them into columns, I just put V equals five meters per second no need to uh, notate if it's an initial or final because it's moving at a constant velocity. So there is only one velocity on this side. On the other side, I'm going to call my velocity VI, my initial velocity of 8.66 meters per second, because this side is accelerating. So there is an initial and final velocity. So speaking of final velocity, we actually know that our final velocity hitting the ground is negative 8.66 meters per second because it's returning back to ground level. So it's going to have the same velocity, but a different sign because now it's moving down as opposed to up. And then we also have our acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. All right. So the problem asks how far does it travel? How, excuse me, how far does the ball travel until it strikes the ground, which is our Delta X. So if we want to find our delta x, we have to use this formula right over here. That's the only formula that we're working with on the left side. So we can go ahead and set up what we have. We have 5 meters per second equals delta x 
over t and we don't have a t value yet so our job is to find t on this side so that we can slide it over to the left hand column remember time is the only value that you can slide from side to side because it does not have a direction so if i take a look at my three acceleration formulas turns out my first one is going to be the one where i have all the values except t so i'm going to solve for t and then slide it over to this side to solve for my delta x All right, so I plugged in all my values on the right-hand side to solve for my time. I had my final velocity of negative 8.66 minus the 8.66 VI value. And then I cross-multiplied this negative 9.8 in the T, and my T turned out to be 1.77 seconds. I took that time, slid it over to this formula right here, cross-multiplied that 1.77 up and over next to the 5, and 5 times 1.77 is 8.84 meters for our final displacement. So remember, when working out a full range angled projectile problem, you definitely wanna make sure you take that initial velocity and break it up into an X and Y components and place those into their columns. From there, you have the final velocity, which is the same number, different sign of your VI, and you definitely have your acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Then from there, you can go ahead and solve for a time, slide your time up and over to the side, and then once it's on this side over here, you have everything except your delta x. So you have one last step of algebra, and then you have your final displacement of 8.84 meters. So that's how you solve for the range for a full range projectile problem. Thanks for watching and listening.